it's great that Jim Knowles, it's great that Jim Knowles and Larry Johnson are on the same page about a wrinkle we'll see with the Buckeyes defensive line. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. When Jim Knowles proposed a potential change for the Buckeyes D-line in the fall, it could have been easy for Larry Johnson to say, nope, not a fan, don't want to go along with it. But that's not the case, and I think that mindset is great for the Buckeyes defense when they step on the field in the fall. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Thursday edition of Locked on Buckeyes here on Thursday, March 28th in the year 2024. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast, and today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Larry Johnson is one of those coaches out there that he is track record in the players he puts into the draft every single year literally speak for it, it speaks for itself. Yeah, his time at Penn State, where he did a lot of good things there. His time at Ohio State, where he continues to do a lot of great things in Columbus. And so for Larry Johnson to be one of those coaches who's been around for a while, 70-plus years of age, you may say, hey, sometimes a wrinkle that a coordinator throws at him, he might say, eh, not a fan. Or he might say, pause, let's run that back, make sure I heard that correctly, and I'm not all the way in on this, and let me tell you why. But that's not the case. Larry Johnson is on the same page as as, uh, Jim Knowles when it comes to cross-training J.T. Tomalowal and Jack Sawyer at outside linebacker to potentially run a big, heavy line, bringing in an extra defensive tackle. You got two guys on the outside that are normally three-point stance guys. They're now standing up at a two-point stance. It's a 5-2 you may want to call it a 3-4, whatever it is, that's a heavier set. And Larry Johnson's all in on it, thinks it's a great idea, and I do too. But I want to tie in on this one thought. Think about how hard it is for people to change. I've been there. I know how I have been when it comes to me changing. Maybe you are a person. When it comes to you changing, maybe it's hard for you to change too. A lot of people don't like to change. I was actually talking to my wife about this recently, where 10, 15, maybe even five years ago, I didn't adjust as easily as I do now. Now, there are still times where your boy is still stubborn and doesn't want to change. But a lot of times, 10, 15, 20 years ago, when I was a youngster, man, adjusting the stuff on the fly, no plans at the very last minute when it's something very, very big, absolutely not. A lot of people, I'm only going to speak for myself right now. Don't want to change. That's just not in their nature. Now, as we get older, yeah, sometimes people learn how to adjust. Sometimes people become more stubborn. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. And Larry Johnson could have easily said, oh, no. Oh, no. Cross training is cool, but not with these guys. (laughs) And not with the guys in my room. Not with the guys that I got here to Columbus to play a certain position Oh, no, 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 no. We tried this once with Jack Sawyer, and it didn't work out the way that we thought it was going to. Oh, yeah. Occasionally, when we drop eight, there are some things there that will be similar to what these guys do when they're playing outside backer. But cross-training them? Buddy, I don't think so. But I think Larry Johnson has two things in mind. Number one, it's a great move for Ohio State in the fall. You're playing Iowa. You're going to play teams that are going to have heavier sets, two tight ends, three tight ends. And it's not two tight ends where it's too tight or it's two tight ends on one side of the line and they're simply just, hey, this is a gimmick. We're going out for a pass. It's not that. You're going to play teams that come out in heavier sets that want to run the ball down your throat. That's what they want to do. And if you go roll out there in your traditional or now base 425, not traditional at Ohio State, but now you're base 425, and all of a sudden your base ain't getting the job done. You haven't worked or prepared for a heavier set. Yeah, you could bring in a third linebacker, but if that don't get the job done, what is next? Well, you're starting now in the spring to plan for things in the fall. 
You got 12 teams already on your schedule. What about the team you may, that you might play in the Big Ten Conference Championship game that's a team you did not play in the regular season? How about potentially playing 17 games in a season with the expanded playoff? You may have to prepare for things and have things in your toolbox now that you don't utilize till January. Why? Because you have the players to do so. So you do it. So for Larry Johnson to be on the same page for with J- Jim Knowles about cross-training, JT Tumaloa and Jack Sawyer at outside backer, I think it's a great idea. And I'm glad Larry Johnson is on the same page as well. But also when it comes to Larry Johnson being on the same page, think about this as well. What is the very next step for these two guys? Sawyer, uh, 33, and Tumalo, 44. What is the very next step for them after their Buckeye career is over at the conclusion of the upcoming season? The NFL. What makes them more valuable prospects for the NFL? Cross-training and being able to play multiple positions and doing it at a high level. We already know these two guys are really, really, really good defensive ends. Jack Sawyer, the final uh, half of last season, really took a major step forward in the right direction. That's great. To him, a low out, he has been solid. Now, in the uh, another season, man, look, you got these two guys. Cross-training get outside backer. We know they have a level of athleticism to play defensive in. But you do this now, you put it on the tape, put it on the film, and all of a sudden the film in their final season is their best film but also shows things they've never done before and they're doing it at a high level. That is huge and great for these two guys. So Larry Johnson realizes when it comes to Ohio State, when it comes to these two defensive ends specifically, there are things they do well. There are things they're going to put on film that maybe they never put on film before. Or maybe there will be things they put on film that is just uh, reaffirming and reassuring the things that they've already done. Great. That's cool. Well, how about you put some more things on the film? And those things they put on the film, it's the first time it's on there. But also, it's at a level that is so high. Like, oh, my goodness. This is going to be a nightmare for opposing defensive coordinators. And it's going to be a nightmare for opposing, excuse me, opposing offensive coordinators. Wow, they play defense. <laughs> it's also going to be a, a potential nightmare for opposing offensive coordinators in the National Football League because of an idea that Jim Knowles had. Now, think about this, though, when it comes to Knowles. That Jack position, I don't think it's going to weigh. I think at some point, the Buckeyes will use the Jack position. Not sure when or who that person will be and I do believe that will be a wrinkle that Ohio State utilizes at some point in time during Jim Knowles tenure as the defensive coordinator for the Buckeyes but also when you think about the Jack position that's a wrinkle that is a tool in Jim Knowles bag that once the thing gets pulled out and it gets sharpened and it gets put in a way that can't anybody slow down or stop and then you have this other double legal formation look There are so many possibilities with the players on Ohio State's defense. As somebody said, the possibilities are endless. And you know what? When it comes to this defense, I'm excited to see it. And I'm also excited and really glad that Jim Knowles and Larry Johnson are on the same page when it comes to this double eagle having a two defensive ends, playing outside backer, bringing in a third defensive tackle. So you're not taking a tackle out. You're bringing in a heavier one and letting that thing go. Trust me. I'm looking forward to this. Potentially having Ty Hamilton, Hero Kadu, Talik Williams, Jack Sawyer, and JT on the field at the same time. I like it. I love it. I can't wait to see it. One thing that I can't wait to see is how the Buckeyes' depth emerge and emerges. It shows itself in a great way in the fall. We'll dive into expectations for the Buckeyes' second unit on the defensive line. It's coming at you next. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. 
Each week, we're picking one team that stands out. A team that's pushed you further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The North Carolina State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in their first two games in the tournament. Wins over Texas Tech and Oakland have set them up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say, win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is also brought to you by Better Together. Bracket already busted, tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best, or losing on the last leg of your pick of entry, introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent, and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social daily fantasy sports movement. Better Together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application. Better Together offers a familiar experience for existing daily fantasy sports players with a social twist. You can play with a friend or teammate. Better Together also provides a sense of camaraderie and enhances the social experience of watching sports. Better Together creates a shared experience. Splitting a contest entry gives the feeling of being connected, even when you're apart. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code LOCKEDON for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N because winning alone is fun, but it is better together. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on the YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day. The second unit at Ohio State is going to be utilized in a different way than normal. We touched on it yesterday when Larry Johnson discussed in a recent presser part of the reason or the big reason why the Buckeyes are calling on and going to need their backups or second unit on the defensive line to play a whole lot more with an expanded playoff. You are looking at, hey, potentially playing 17 games in a season. What will you need more than ever before? Your defensive lineman on the backup side of things to play more, to keep those starters and those leaders of the unit fresh all game long. So Larry Johnson does plan on using them in a more expensive way. But Larry Johnson said his plan for the second unit is to play them 25 to 35 plays a game and to do it early in the season. And we touched on it. When you look at the Buckeye schedule, I don't have it pulled up just yet. However, when you look at the Buckeye schedule early in the year, you should expect for the backups to play a whole lot. You got Hero Canoe. You got Tywon Malone, who's playing a whole lot better of late. Going to touch on him later. Uh, Cade McDonald, Jason Moore. Caden Curry, Kenyatta Jackson Jr., Mitchell Melton. You got a lot of these guys are going to need to play a whole lot more than normal in the upcoming season for various reasons. But when you think about them in the time period that they will be playing, as the computer is going a little bit slow pulling up the schedule. You got open up with Akron, that's a home game. Open up with Western Michigan, that's a home game. You got to buy in the third week of the season. Then you got Marshall, then you're on the road at Michigan State. Really, the first tough game is home against Iowa. Then you go at Oregon, so you got back-to-back tough games. But what is that? That is game, uh, games five and six. Yeah, games. So I'm I'm counting out loud. Games five and six. So you got home against Iowa on the road in Austin Stadium against Oregon. You have plenty of time 
to get these younger guys more reps than normal. So this should already be expected for guys like Caden Curry, Kenyatta Jackson Jr., Hero Canoe, and others to get a whole lot more playing time throughout the first half of the season just based on the schedule. That's an automatic. But now when you're saying 25 to 35 plays, doing it early, that's how many plays per game you're looking at. It's a whole lot different looking at the schedule and then realizing the reason behind Larry Johnson doing things a little bit different this year than normal. It's going to be weird, man. Like, I I am adjusting. Like, we talked about adjusting earlier. we got to bring it back up again at this point in the show. I am adjusting with the times of the sport. I do think the sport was more popular 20 years ago. As popular as college football is right now, and trust me, it's a popular sport. It is taking over. I'm not saying it's not at a super popular sport right now. However, man, look, I think 20 years ago, what do you have in college football? At USC, at Texas, at Ohio State, at LSU, and at other places around the country, you got dogs, you got dudes. In the battle to be number one or number two or to simply be in one of those BCS bowls, that was that meant a whole lot. A New Year's Six Bowl is weighted, but a New Year, being in a New Year's Six Bowl doesn't mean as much as it did being in a BCS Bowl. It, I'm telling you, it did not. It didn't. What did you have? That, I, mean, I love this sport. I, I have no problem saying that. Trust me, I think my passion comes through every day here on the show. I love this sport. But what's going on right now with it? I can't, I, I'm, I'm trying to adjust to the times. I don't uh, agree with a lot of the things going on. But it's just weird. It's very, very, very weird. It's going to get weirder, too. It's also going to be weird, just to use that word to make a quick transition. It worked out very well. Seeing a lot of these younger guys playing in meaningful games and playing a whole lot more than normal. We saw Caden Curry and Keanu Jackson Jr. in games and Hero Canoe in games. But it wasn't 25 to 35 plays per game early in the year. That wasn't the case. Now, I understand you had Indiana week one. You had some cupcakes later on. Great. Cool. Whatever. You didn't see him a whole lot in a lot of those games saying 25 to 35 plays per game earlier. But for that to be the case, and for that to be what Larry Johnson wants from these guys, well, I want to see it. I want to continue to see it. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. And I do believe Larry Johnson is about that business, is about this life. And I do believe Larry Johnson is going to do exactly what he says. Now, a year ago, we on this show were calling for more rotation on the Buckeyes defensive line. Didn't rotate as much as we thought they should have. We were kind of confused here on the show, kind of scratching our heads, not pulling the hair out. Your boy don't have much hair up top, so I'm not going to say pulling the hair out or pulling the beard out. I'm not doing that either, but... It was very confusing. Like, you got these guys that you say, oh, they're flashing. I'm diving back here in a second, too. They're flashing in practice. They're doing this thing good, doing that thing good. But they said, oh, they're flashing. A lot of times, I didn't see that flash on the football field. Now, a game is different than practice. Don't get me wrong. But what do we hear all the time? You're going up against Ohio State Buckeyes, starters in practice. You're going to get better. Okay, cool. Like, that's a that's a narrative. That's cool. That's whatever. But. No, I didn't really see that. And that word flash, there's so many different things coming to my head right now. I have heard that word flash used numerous times since I started covering and hosting this podcast back in 2020. And a lot of times when I hear that word flash, I used to buy into it, man. Oh, he's flashing. Cool. He going to get on the field. I, I used to hear Jaden Ballard was flashing. This is what going into last year. And I'm not saying Jaden Ballard was bad. I'm not, I'm, just saying, I'm not saying he's a bad player, but oh, so and so's flashing is, is, um, Ability to be able to play in the uh, or perform at the pro day was great for him, and people got to see some of his skill sets in the NFL scouts a little bit earlier than expected. Then what happened? No, didn't get on the field. Keanu Jackson Jr. being another one. Now, there are some things he needs to be more consistent that we've heard now that we didn't hear last year, but Jackson Jr. needs to be more consistent. Uh, one coach said, I don't exactly remember what coach it was, said that he needs to be really believe himself and have the confidence. So there are reason why guys aren't on the field. But when I hear a guy say, oh, he's flashing, lately I've been saying, okay, cool, he's good, he's making strides, he's doing some things right, he's probably not going to play as much as you might think when you he gets highlighted in a presser. That's where I am right now with that. I'm also in a great spot with 
Larry Johnson, he's on board with Jim Knowles. He's on board with changing things up for the defensive line. They utilize in the second unit more than normal. And I'm also on board with what Larry Johnson tells recruits when he's out on the recruiting trail. We'll dive into that next as Locked on Buckeyes rolls on on a Thursday. This episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, and it's all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a whole lot more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. This episode is also brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. And guys, check this out. Billiards Plus has more cues than anyone in Ohio that can fix your billiards woes in their shop that is on site. They are truly the best of their class. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Ahasan, Canada, Billiards and more. They are family owned and operated. And when you talk to the staff at Billiards Plus, you know you're talking to an expert who won't steer you wrong. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Kenny. Sarah, and the whole staff will always go above and beyond to give you the best customer service in the industry. Billiards Plus. Visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Thank you for making Lock on Buck Guys your first listen every day. Larry Johnson is one of those guys that when I started covering Ohio State and when he first got hired by Ohio State, I was very happy he got hired, uh, I believe, by Urban Meyer. And when I start watching him and being closely uh, in tune to what he's doing with the Buckeyes defensive line, I'm saying, oh, okay, I understand this move. I understand that move. And as confused as I was a year ago, I understand now why, on the back end, he did what he did during last season with the Buckeyes second unit. And I do think this year, as far as depth goes, we're going to talk more about depth next week on the Buckeyes team as a whole, because I do think this team, depth-wise, there's more things they can do to make this team a whole lot better than it currently is. It's really, 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 really good where we currently stand at this point in the offseason. Larry Johnson is one of those guys. I think about somebody 70-plus. I think about somebody that I hope tells the truth. I hope they don't hold back. I hope they share some nuggets for people to learn from all of the time. And Larry Johnson recently talked about how he is viewed and um, how teams try to negatively uh, use his age in recruiting to recruit against Ohio State. And he used a phrase and a quote to describe what he tells people and pros prospects when he's out on the recruiting trail. He simply does this. He tells them the truth. I, I love that. And he also goes on further, went on further to say, right now the truth is that he has no plans to leave in the, in the near future. So you're telling the youngsters the truth and also telling them the truth about not only your plans for them at Ohio State, where they currently stand as a recruit, where how they can get better, the relationship and how you'll impact them and help them when they come to Columbus, but also you're telling the truth about yourself and Larry Johnson and – what his plans are for Ohio State over the in the near future? Do you really think a lot of coaches out there 
tell other recruits when they plan on taking a new job and they know that new job might be coming a couple of days after a certain visit is being made? I don't. I don't at all. I'm not saying that that is something that a lot of people would say, but I don't think a lot of coaches out there are telling the recruits on recruiting visits and when they're in p- players' homes, oh, uh, in a couple of days, I'm taking this job. You want to come with me? I don't think there's. I don't think they're doing that. I, I, I don't. I don't at all. I think a lot of coaches know when they're in a home that hey, I'm not going to be at this school much longer, but they're still recruiting and working like they're going to be at that school for a long period of time. It's really confusing. I'm not a fan of it, but that's where we are in this sport. It's been that way for a long time. A lot of people lie. I don't. I don't understand lying. Just tell the truth. Absolutely 100% of the time, tell the truth. And I'm saying this to someone, I realize people lie. I have lied. You have lied. People lie. What does it hap- What happens when you do that? Normally, nothing good happens. And you may want to lie to get out of being in trouble. Maybe you might be in school. You get caught doing something. Oh, it wasn't me. It was so-and-so. And you get out of it by lying. What is that? No. Just got to cause more confusion. You got to try to cover up the lie, or you got to eventually tell the truth and make yourself look stupid for lying. So many negative things. And Larry Johnson being really an honest man. And that's one thing I'll enjoy about him. He's honest, he's real, he helps people. And it, his tact is even though he's a little old school, he's adjusting to the new school mindset. I'm here for it, man. And I love it. I, I'm glad Larry Johnson is at Ohio State. And I'm also glad. There's no problem telling the truth on the recruiting trail. I wanted to end this show doing something a little bit different, a little really quickly by doing a little bracket update. Didn't share my bracket. I shared my final four teams. Uh, originally, were Auburn, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Houston on the men's side. On the women's side, my final four teams originally in the bracket were Iowa, UConn, Stanford, and South Carolina. Uh, on the men's side, the men's bracket, I have. <laughs> I have lost four teams in the Sweet 16. I've lost – I originally had Auburn, Grand Canyon, Baylor, and Kentucky in the Sweet 16. That is not the case. I got 12 of the 16 Sweet 16 Sweet 16 teams remaining. I got six of eight Elite Eight teams, and I've only lost one of my Final Four teams. Really, the bracket, the first round was not the best at all. A lot of X's on my, on my paper, especially in the East and West regions. Um, only got one game so far incorrect on the Midwest region and multiple games incorrect, um, two games incorrect so far on the South region. So the East and the, and the West kind of tripped me up. But I wanted to provide a little update as far as the bracket goes. And I still got my national champion on both. I still got three of the four of final four teams on the – uh, men's side, all four on the women's side. And I got some picks for you here quick. We're going to run down this very, very quickly so everybody knows exactly who I think is going to win these games tonight, tomorrow, and through the weekend before we wrap up this show tomorrow. Well, tonight is his tonight, actually, where the game starts. I got North Carolina being, beating Alabama. I got Arizona beating Clemson. I got – where's my bracket? Ooh, wrong one's in front of me. Wrong one is in front of me of me i got let's go since that bracket's already messed up i'll take uconn over san diego state and then i have iowa state over illinois uh for tomorrow as my phone is acting a fool i got marquette over nc state i got purdue over gonzaga i got houston over duke and i got tennessee over creighton on the women's side, not even going to go through that quickly uh, as far as like comparing and contrasting the brackets. Let's just go and get these picks off very, very quickly. On Friday, I got Notre Dame over Oregon State. I got South Carolina over Indiana. I got Stanford over North Carolina State. And I got Gonzaga. No, I got Texas over Gonzaga. That's one's actually on my bracket. I got. LSU over UCLA, Iowa over Colorado, USC over Baylor, and UConn over Duke. That was the, those are the picks. Sorry for being a little confusing. It's been a long day out of here. This show is complete. Really, I'm glad this show is here. Uh, going to try to get Brian Smith on the show tomorrow, and hopefully I'll stutter over the words at the end of the show like I'm doing 
right now. As always, you can follow me on X at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Out of here on a Thursday. We'll see you next time.